Hello Internet, a sweaty Hewlett here. Yes, indeed, I'm back. I did the burn and learn. I did it. Torture device, complete, did it, and done. And ah, I feel so much better. No, I don't. I feel like I never want to do it again, but um, that's how I feel every time, no matter how long it's been. And it has been a long time. I, God, you guys have been bugging me. I've been bugging me. My wife's been looking at me sideways. My son's been poking at my fat belly. Um, you know, I had to get back on the elliptical and do a little exercise because I was feeling it. And, um, you know, I know I see the future ahead of me and it has, you know, age onset diabetes and bad knees and all that kind of stuff. And um, I just, I just, I don't want, I want to be around to see all this cool biotech stuff happen. Speaking of biotech, the reason why I'm so excited about that, I just spent the weekend in Las Vegas one of the strangest cities on the planet, where I was in a room with the coolest people on the planet. Like, it's surrounded by people a billion times smarter than me, all involved in biotechnology, biohacking, body hacking. Um, just a brilliant, brilliant bunch of amazing people who I enjoyed every second with. Um, and uh, this is this event that was put together by... Um, uh, Josiah, who runs a company called The Odin, which I love. Um, that's where I get all of my biotech supplies from. And, and the classes, they also do classes in bioengineering, so you can get a whole sort of, like, from scratch, get into this stuff and start um, having some fun. Um, my hope is, again, to get the tech terrors into this kind of stuff, or tech bandits, or whatever we end up calling them. I really want to add a biotech component to the technology stuff that we're doing. So that was my hope, and now I'm getting sucked into this really cool world. Um, so, um, so I'll be doing that stuff. So we got Josiah. There's um, Esther, uh, who was just amazing at sort of emceeing and keeping things things going there. Um, and uh, and of course uh, there was Jill, who taught me how to pipette, um, amongst many other things. Um, uh, she's um, she's been in the um, bioengineering 101, teaching all sort of the lab that sort of the the, uh, the actual physical lab stuff that you need to learn. So uh, I will be practicing my pipetting. I promise you, Jill. I promise. Um, my homework will be done. Um, so uh, why am I here? Yes, I'm here because uh, I thought. What a great reason to get back on the torture device. I had an article to read. And the article is by this guy who I met this weekend um, who uh, I, just got, I just got along like a house on fire with this guy. I just loved him from the moment we met. We just got along and chatting and just hung out. And um, he is an old a biotech guy. Not old. Uh, he's probably younger than I am. But... Um, uh, you know, he started off in the garage doing this kind of stuff. Then he got uh, approached by law enforcement and stuff to start helping them out with like what they should be doing with this stuff, what they should be worried about or not. Um, then he got brought in to uh, talk to government organizations and Microsoft and all sorts of stuff. So he's basically been consulting with all these companies. He's now started a fund where he invests in biotech related stuff and it just sounds so cool. Um, so uh, I just had a great time picking his brains and learning all about this stuff and laughing and watching and talking about science science fiction and, and just all that stuff. So just a great all-around guy. So I really wanted to get and dive into this um, sort of series of articles that he sent me to read. Um, so he's written this um, section of a book called uh, Megatech. And uh, his section, of course, is on bioengineering and what the future could look like in 2050. Um, I highly recommend you giving it a read. It is, uh, it's great. <laughs> I mean, it looks so cool. He's got this great kind of like Western look to it. Like these, these, these sort of these bioreactors wandering around on robotic legs like free-range cattle and uh, and uh, cortical um, cortical implants that uh, allow you to um uh, to to uh, to just basically directly be connected to the internet and uh, which we're already seeing his, his point is like we're seeing the beginning of all this stuff like they're sort of on the fringe a bit now but it's it will happen and in 2050 this stuff's going to be boring because it's just going to be around us all the time so um, just a really cool future to look forward to and the whole blending of man and machines always been a big thing for me so um, so a great read there I've also got a book he wrote a book um, which I'm going to just look it up because I want to make sure I get the title right. Um, uh, all right, so he's going by Rob Carlson, and the book is Biology is Technology. Um, I guess the information about it is biologyistechnology.com. I think that's going to be my next read after my biology homework's done, and I learned my lines for this thing that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, but um, uh, yes, another movie coming up. I'll tell you about it when I can. Um, but uh, so Biology is Technology, I'm going to read that next. I think that's going to be my next, that's going to be the next learn of my burn. And um, so if anyone wants to join me in that, please, you know, grab it, have a look, and um, maybe... Hmm, maybe we could get little Robert Carlson to 
come on to a Twitch stream with us and chat about the future of this stuff. We could read the book, talk about it, and then talk with the actual author about it. That would be really cool. And he has no idea that I'm saying this, but um, maybe I can talk him into that because it'd be kind of fun. Also, I just like talking to the guy. It's just, it's just, he's just this like fountain of knowledge, of all things biotech, sci-fi. It's just fun. He's just a great guy. I really enjoyed, really enjoyed hanging out with him. Um, and I'm not just saying that so that he'll come and do this. Um, so, um, have a look at that. That will be our next, uh, our next Burn and Learn. Again, I have to say thank you to the Odin, to Josiah, to everybody for just an amazing weekend. Like I just, I came out of there. I'm just so excited. I'm so um, just like jazzed to be a part of all this stuff. Jazzed. I sound like I really am from the 80s, aren't I? Um, so much so that I actually left on the torture device. So that's a good thing. Um, I'm also going to say it came up a couple times during the the conference. People were asking me about about uh, why I was eating or not eating depending on the day and stuff. And I'm on this like five two diet thing where you. Basically, out of five days, you have to do two non-consecutive days of fasting. Um, and the theory, I don't know whether it's legit or not, I, I haven't read all the papers on it, but I started looking into it. Um, uh, the idea is you basically, we eat too much. We're used to eating all the time. We shouldn't be. We're not designed for that. Um, and that every so often, we should be putting our body into sort of like recovery mode um, that, the, that they're hoping... Uh, will sort of kickstart a bunch of processes that are much better for you, including so the production of stem cells and that kind of stuff. I don't know if that's legit. I don't know. It's probably going to be disproven or already disproven. I don't know. But uh, right now it feels kind of good because it's knocking a little a little weight off me. Um, it helps me with my sort of obsessive um, discipline thing. Like I can't, I can do a diet. I can do a diet and be strict for like years if necessary. But as soon as I stop, it's like this, it's like the floodgates, come down and the and the pizza rolls in I just I, I can't uh, yeah I'm not good at it I need I need like a, just something that I know this is how it's done if that makes sense I need like a day-to-day -day lifestyle approach to this stuff so I'm hoping that this will allow me to do that um, although my son's already saying like um, this is this a fast day just before I ask you this question because um, apparently it can affect your mood slightly um, I think it's been actually pretty good I've, I've got to say I've, I found that it's it's sort of it's even sort of helped a bit with energy and stuff. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see. There are some days that are absolutely miserable and it feels like I'm wading through molasses, but um, most days uh, it's been okay. Uh, we'll see. Talk to me tomorrow because that's that's when I won't be eating again. <laughs> um, so got a bunch of stuff on the go. As I say, there's a movie that, um, of course, I can't say anything about yet, but mainly just because I feel like an idiot if it doesn't happen at this point. But um, uh, it should be kind of fun. It's a friend of mine and it's a funny little script. And uh, yeah, it's cute. I think, uh, and I get to, I, you know, once again, I, I have kind of a fun part. So um Looking forward to that, and also I've got like ten episodes of this um, of this makerspace show component to uh, um, uh, to another show that uh, that my friends at Shaspery are doing. So I'm really hoping to sort of get in the lab, whether that be here or in whatever they come up with, um, and uh, get some sort of tech terror type stuff down on film and uh, and um, show off some some science experiments and um, basically have the kids show me how it's done because you know that's why I'm there. I'm there for them to teach me. It's what I call the hands in pocket teaching method, where basically they say, how do you do it? And I say, I don't know. Let's figure it out. Because generally I don't know, but they don't know that. So um, anyways, until we uh, geek again, sweaty or not, here I come. I do hope I'm back soon because I would like to get back into the, into the swing of this because I need to do it. And, um, and, uh, and also um, you guys will then hopefully stop bothering me about it. All right, cheerio. Bye.